Hi guys, good morning. This is your Sir Kevin again. In our accounting tutorial today, we will be talking about business combinations, acquisition of net assets. Here I have a problem for you and it is focused on overvaluations and undervaluations. Yan po. So let's get to this. First of all, the very first thing you do in problems is always read the requirements first. Itong tatlong to, we have one, calculate the amount of acquisition cost. Okay, basic, standard. Calculate the amount of fair value of identifiable net assets. And lastly, calculate the amount of any goodwill or gain on acquisition. Itong requirements natin, they are the fundamental computations that one student should first master in business combination before moving forward. These computations will be useful in further requirements na maaaring itanong sa atin. So, it would be best if we can master them first before we delve deeper. So, let's answer number one, acquisition cost. Reading through the problem, on January 1, 2020, Nana Corporation issued 10,000 shares of its 100 par value ordinary shares for all of Harit's net asset. Okay, that statement fixes who is your acquirer and your acquiree, Harith. Nana, our acquirer. Harith, our acquiree. And so it happens, Nana issued 10,000 shares. Ito po ang acquisition cost mo. But we'll read through the problem kung meron pang ibang components. 10,000 shares. May par siya na 100. The acquisition resulted in the latter's dissolution. Market quotations for the two stocks on this date are Nana Ordinary Shares, 180. Okay, and Harris Ordinary Shares, 190. So this portion here, it talks about acquisition cost. Yung requirement number one natin. Okay, we have not really read kung meron pang related sa acquisition cost down here. Pero, let's do a conclusion here. 10,000 shares, how do I value it? Do I use par value or do I use 180 or 190? Ito po, most definitely, you will not be using 190 unless kagigising mo lang. Okay? Kasi ang in-issue, Nana shares. Nana issued shares. So you will not be using this. You're only tied between 180 and 100. And if you know the fundamental principle in business combinations, you would conclude na ang gagamitin po for the 10,000 shares is this one. Your fair value or market value. Bakit? All instruments in business combination, all instruments exchanged in a business combination, they should be recognized at fair value. So, itong instrument na to, equity instrument, in natin in lieu of net assets, it should be valued at market value, its closest fair value. Let's see if there are more components on acquisition cost. Reading through, balance sheet information for Harris Corporation at January 1, 2020. Okay, I don't need to read further. Upon reading this, it would mean that this portion is Harris balance sheet. That means it is related to the net assets. Itong portion na to, we will be using that for computing FINA. So let's skip it for now kasi we are looking for acquisition cost. The above book values of Harit net assets were not equal to the respective fair values. Okay, so this portion here talks about overvaluations and undervaluations. It will also be useful in computing your requirement too. So all in all, ang requirement number one po natin, ang acquisition cost, isa lang ang nakakita natin na pwedeng gamitin. And that is only the 10,000 shares. So let us compute it. So that's 10,000 shares multiplied by 180 your answer acquisition cost is 1,800 so ito po ang rule natin all instruments exchanged in a business combination will be recognized at their fair value so gamit natin is the 180 market value and now going to your requirement number 2 
we are being asked the fair value of identifiable net assets. So yan, we determined earlier na ito po ang related sa fair value of identifiable net assets. So let's just compute first your BINA or book value of identifiable net assets. The only difference between BINA and FINA is the over and under valuation. So ito po, they are the book values. And ito po yung differences on book value and fair value. Our fundamental rule, sinana po, concern siya on the fair values of the assets and liabilities that he is acquiring. So you are not going to recognize the assets at book value. Rather, kailangan ma-record natin yung assets na yan and liabilities at their fair values. So on Nana's perspective, these are inaccurate values. Okay, itong assets and liabilities na to, they are inaccurate because we have to adjust them with the following effects. The plant asset are overvalued by 200,000. Okay. Itong plant asset na 2,075,000, that is booked above its fair value. Nagsobra to. The book value is greater than its fair value by 200,000. So meaning, ang actual fair value niya is only... 1875, right? Yung current asset naman, undervalued by 50. Sabi, ito daw kulang by 50. Current liabilities were also understated. So, the liabilities of 400 is understated by 100,000. That should be 500, right? The long-term debt was overstated by 40. Okay, so itong 900,000, sobra daw by 40. Now, there are two ways in order for us to acquire FINA. And this first method that I am going to present to you is a computation that will require us first to compute BINA. So, BINA is assets at book value minus liabilities at book value ni acquiry. So, current assets were booked at 825,000. Add natin dyan si non-current asset or plant asset. 2,075,000. A total asset figure of 2,900,000. Tapos minus natin si liabilities na 400,000. And then minus ulit, long-term debt, 900,000. That would net us 1,600,000 your BINA. So moving forward, book value of identifiable net assets must be adjusted for over and under valuation of net assets. Ito po ang rule. Overstatement in asset, understatement in liab, they are overvaluation of net asset. Then, understatement in asset, overstatement in liab, they are undervaluation of net assets. So, let's pick them out. Overvalued plant asset, overvaluation of net asset yan. So, that is going to be deducted. Current assets were undervalued. Okay, kulang daw ang asset. So that is an undervaluation of net assets. Ia-add natin yan. Current liabilities were understated. Understated liab, that means overstated net assets. So ang 100,000 overstates net assets, we need to deduct it. And then, you have lastly overstatement in liabilities that is an undervaluation in your net assets. So we add lang natin yan plus 40,000. You get your answer 1,390,000. So your solution should look like this. Requirement number 2 solution. First of all, book value of identifiable net asset is computed as follows. Add all undervaluation of net assets minus overvaluation of net assets. Then you should be able to get your fair value of identifiable net assets that way. But there is another approach. Instead of grouping overvaluations and undervaluations, you can instead do it like this. So here what we did is we just simply adjusted each asset and liability account to their fair value. Itong FINA po, it stands for Fair Value of Identifiable Net Assets, 1,390. And these individual figures are the actual fair values of the assets and liabilities. 
So, if you would ask me which one I prefer, I would choose this one over the previous solution. Kasi ito po, nakikita ko kung ano ang i-record ko in the books of Nana. And they are these figures. Yon. So, that's Fina. Our last requirement, we will be talking about goodwill or gain on acquisition. Pero as we already know, goodwill is simply acquisition cost minus Fina. So we already computed acquisition cost. We already have Fina. Our goodwill is simply computed as follows. So here, acquisition cost minus Fina. Positive result, that is goodwill or gain on bargain purchase kung negative. But since positive siya, we have a goodwill of 410,000. And the acquisition will be recorded as follows. Assets at their fair value. Goodwill as per computation. Current liabilities and long-term debt at their fair value. Shares issued at par. And share premium as a result of fair valuation. 